Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just who, I guess for the lack of better words, I'm going to put this in quotes, but who runs the prisons in Tennessee? <laughs> That's funny you ask that, man, because when I came home in 97, man, you know, nobody in particular ran the prisons or, you know, just depending on what part of the state you were in. East Tennessee, the Aaron Nations run the prisons. You know, more Middle Tennessee, Nashville, Chattanooga area. Uh, the blacks run the prison. Um, now that you have a, a large amount of uh, Crips, uh, not any particular Crips, but just Crips as a whole, you have a lot of Crips or the gangster disciples in different prisons. You know, they may run a particular prison. On the uh, West Tennessee, you know, you, you have a, a lot of the same. Uh, in, in Memphis, man, it's, it's a lot of gangster disciples and, and vice lords, man. So uh, I would say that they probably control that part, uh, along with the Crips, gangster disciples and the Crips, you know, probably in the prison system in Tennessee, I would say, from middle Tennessee to west Tennessee. Okay. And I think earlier you mentioned something that about putting putting some people on while you were, while you were locked up. Like, yeah. Okay. Talk to me about the whole recruiting process and how you try to grow in numbers. Well, man, I mean, back then, man, again, you know, we had no clue, you know, and a couple of guys, like I mentioned, that was from two particular crib sets, man, you know, really introduced that lifestyle of um, being put on. So we just follow suit, man. You know, it was a couple of, those couple of guys put on a few guys themselves. And for myself, you know, it's initiation. I mean, you understand initiation, man. So uh -huh. that's how they went, you know. Uh, we didn't have a, a particular place really in prison because prison is so open, you know. So you might have to fall in the bathroom or, or in a single cell or something, you know, and, and put a cat on, so. Now, I know when you mentioned when you first got locked up that, you know, Crips and Bloods were a new thing. Fast forward to 1997, was it more prevalent behind bars? Like, did you start, did the numbers grow drastically? Yeah, they started to grow. By the time that I, I was on my way out, it started to grow, uh, the difference is Los Angeles, man, California, when you're dealing with prisons, it's a street gang that, you know, get locked up. Gangs, members will get locked up for doing whatever, gang banging or whatever. It's a totally difference in Tennessee. Since we didn't have gangs on the street initially, a lot of the gangs were formed in prison until enough of them were able to come out, get out, and then start to initiate. So, the process was totally different. Okay. Want to go go in another direction a little bit, but um, how important, you know, especially at that time when you were coming up building and things like that, how important was it or is it to touch base with the land, the quote unquote land for you know people out there who don't know what I'm talking about, Los Angeles. Yeah. Well, at the time, I had lost contact with my OG homeboy from the county jail to the pen. So we didn't have, initially, we didn't have a, a contact. But um, for the cats, the two older cats who were from Main Street and from 87 Kitchen and 87 Gangster, uh, they kind of talk uh, the lifestyle of cricket, you know, being from Hoover, nobody could really actually teach me how to groove, which is a difference. You know, teach me about the H, which we say, you know, the H is number one, Hoover is number one, meaning it comes before Crippin, you know, because it was Hoover before it was anything, before the Crip was even put on it. So, 
you know. At first, we just had to kind of go with the flow, man. And and then once I came home, you know, I wanted all of that to change, you know, because I was heavy in it. And I wanted to make sure we got the right uh, education about it, the knowledge about the history of where we claim who the who was what. From the full trade to the one way, I, I needed to know. So that's how that happened, man. When I took the trip, called my family members and took my first trip to Los Angeles, man. I was on a mission, you know, so I can bring that same knowledge back to Tennessee and spread the word, man. And to the best of your knowledge, why did Five Deuce decide to stay crip while, you know, the other Hoovers uh, went the criminal route? Uh, I, I know that firsthand because I, a few years ago, back in 2007, 8, 9, I was shooting a, a documentary, One Nation Under Groove, L.A. to Tennessee, where I had a lot of OG Hoovers on, on the documentary, man. Somehow I lost that footage, oh, wow. thanks to Culver City Police in Los Angeles. Oh, that but that's sucks. another story. Um, you know, once the Crips started fighting the Crips, man. You know, the homeless, uh, other than the five deuces, the rest of the, the homeless, didn't want to claim Crip anymore. You know, because they figured, you know, why be a Crip? Why stay a Crip if we only killing Crips? But, you know, the five deuces is going to stay the same. They didn't change the criminal. You know, and that's another thing that got tangled and twisted outside of California that when the whole Hoover card changed to criminal, except five deuces, a lot of cats, especially in Tennessee, thought that that's what it was. And, and actually in, in New Jersey and New York, because I had the opportunity to go out there and straighten that situation out, where a lot of five deuces thought that they was criminals hmm. and crips, which was the craziest thing I've heard. Interesting. So you're, you're kind of like an ambassador to go to different cities and I mean, I guess that's the best word, right? Yeah, yeah I, I would say I'm an ambassador, <laughs> but you know, I was, I was called upon. I, I said, the cat out of uh, Trent, New Jersey, you know, and Camden called me while living in Los Angeles uh, at the time and, and uh, had heard my name in the streets or whatever. And um, through somebody else has contacted me through social media. Uh, they flew me out to Newark, New Jersey. You know, and I had the opportunity to meet Cash in, in Irvington and Newark, Plainsfield and Patterson, Asbury, all was Hoover. You know, they had different sets of Hoovers in uh, New Jersey too. But have a few 107 Hoovers and five deuces and, you know, up there. So, yeah, man, I had the opportunity to do that, man, because like I said, man, you know, you have these, these cats who some of them are run outs, you know, I got kicked off the turf, booted off the turf for some from Los Angeles, man, and they just go to other states, other cities, man, and and pretend to be something that they they wouldn't or or, or not anymore. You know what I'm saying? And maybe because they grew up in that community, they say, oh, you know, I'm from Five or you know, I'm from Swans or whatever the case may be. You know, and you know, for a person who don't know any better, man, they'll believe that shit, you know, and take to it and then become a, a fucking active gay member but never seen the soil, man. You, you know, everybody has to see the soil. Everybody got to come to the land, man, you know. So uh, they was uh, five dudes who were gangster criminal crips in Newark, New Jersey. Mm. And, you know, I can't take the... I can't take the ambassador role, but... <laughs> I can actually definitely say for a fact, and many can vouch for this, is that I changed that, that whole narrative, you know, the whole look. So after I left, them guys became Hoover Gangster Crips. So 